Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Francophile Reader. So today I want to do a tag that a ton of people have been doing on booktube and I really want to do it because I want to see what Steve thinks about my list. Has he read the books that I recommend? Has he not read them? I know that there technically are no rules about this challenge, but I have imposed some rules on myself. Uh, the first being that I am not going to choose books that I think that Steve would never read. Uh, that is, books in genres like erotica that he doesn't read. I mean, I haven't read them either, so I wouldn't be recommending or talking about those books. The second being that I'm not going to choose a book at the research library that is so obscure that only I have read because I am working in this particular subfield of a subfield and I know that this book exists but it's not a book that circulates and Steve would not have received a proof of the book. And so I wanted to choose books that I thought Steve could reasonably have read uh, but also that I don't think he has read. So um, let's begin. So okay, um, excuse the construction outside but I want to start with science books. So the first is The Secret World of Red Wolves by Bieland T. Deline. Now this is a book that is written by a scientist uh, but it's a book that I found at my local public library. It's a small branch so I think it is a reasonable choice to put on this list. The Secret World of Red Wolves is about red wolf conservation. Red wolves are very 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 endangered. Um, there are only like less than 50 in the world and they live mostly in captivity in this nature preserve in North Carolina. The problem with red wolves is that they hybridize with coyotes and so their pups are hybrids. Conservation efforts are really interesting and this book actually made me feel very uncomfortable and at points I felt very angry. Now I'm not a vegetarian and Steve is so if he has read this book I'm sure he was very very upset by certain aspects of the conservation efforts which include euthanizing hybrid pups. The reason why I found this particularly troubling in addition to of course hybrid uh, you know euthanizing pups that are healthy and you know at the beginning of their lives, it just seems to me that these hybrid pups have a higher fitness. If this is the norm, if the norm is that red wolves and coyotes mate and have viable offspring, I why are we interfering with that? I mean, I understand that we kind of think it's great that there is this pure red wolf, but nature isn't selecting for that and I don't know why um, conservationists are so adamant about that. But the reason why I recommend this book is because I think that conservation is not really understood what Fish and Life, Wildlife Services does, how scientists work or are in opposition to Fish and Wildlife Services. It's a really complicated relationship. If you want a book that is a little bit more popular and a book that for sure Steve has read, I would recommend American Wolf by Nate Blakesley. Um, that one talks about the reintroduction of the American Grey Wolf at Yellowstone National Park and it talks all about you know the politics of conservation how does an animal end up on the endangered species list how does it get off the list what happens when the american wolf was introduced reintroduced into yellowstone what are the controversies surrounding that um etc so that's a more popular book it was it was very popular a couple of years ago so steve has definitely read it but the secret world of red wolves i think is a little bit less known even though i think that um, it is possible that he may have read it. Second book, Tracking the Vanishing Frogs, An Ecological Mystery by Katherine Phillips. Now this book was written in the 90s before global warming became a big hot button issue, captured the imagination, you know, got businesses trying to pretend that they're green, etc. Global warming was first kind of identified by herpetologists. And frogs aren't as sexy as polar bears or penguins. Most people don't care that frog species are becoming extinct. But it was actually for herpetologists who noticed that certain species of frogs that they used to study year after year had gone extinct. Like they, they just couldn't find any more samples of this organism. Tracking the Vanishing Frogs is all about that. It's, a, it's about the beginning of scientists becoming aware that there's this global issue and um, how important it is to study 
frogs and snakes and you know other organisms that again aren't as uh, widely appreciated. And the third book is Genetically Modified Language, The Discourse of the GM Debate by Guy Cook. It is possible that he has read this one, uh, Steve, but Genetically Modified Language is about GMOs, biotechnology, biotech crops, um, and it's about the language, the rhetoric that is used to talk about biotechnology, about why it is that there is so much suspicion surrounding biotech crops, I have not made it a secret on my channel that I support biotech crops. I've known scientists who work on it. I have read their papers. I was interested in working in uh, toxicology. I know how funding works. You know, I know all of these things. But I think this is really interesting for thinking about how companies did or did not tell the general public that the corn that was being used was genetically modified, right? That that, is, that that was biotech. And, you know, whether that is the issue. For the most part, I found this book to be incredibly eye-opening and it really made me more sympathetic to the anti-GMO movement. Ultimately, I do think that the author is on that side of the issue. And there were some things he said at the end of the book that I felt were just unscientific. But it can also be a really good book for thinking about why it is that science isn't always accepted by the general public or just, you know, the ways that uh, the general public responds to um, science, technology, the relationship between scientists and large corporations, etc. Okay, so that's that with the science books. Then I want to mention Rue des Boutiques Obscures, uh, which is translated as Missing Person by Patrick Modiano. The reason why I mention Patrick Modiano is because Steve has talked about Georges Simenon and his Inspector Maigret series. Now, I've never read Simenon, but uh, Modiano's missing person is a sort of mystery, and it is written as an homage to Simenon's work. So it's possible he has read it, but if he hasn't, I do want to recommend Modiano's missing person. It is very interesting. Then, um, as you can see, I'm going to be mentioning some French works that are available in translation in English. I, I definitely just wanted to choose books that are available in English. Even if Steve can read French, I don't expect that he's keeping up with the French publishing world. I, I don't think that would be fair. Uh, so the next book is uh, Tomorrow's Eve by Villiers de Lille Adam. It is possible he's read this book because it is an early work of sci-fi. Uh, it is quite sexist, but it is interesting. I think that if you're interested in reading some early sci-fi, uh, Tomorrow's Eve brings up some interesting questions about artificial intelligence, about uh, robots. It has been translated in English, so Tomorrow's Eve. Le Malentendu, or The Misunderstanding, by Albert Camus. Uh, so Camus, of course, very famous French author. Um, I would expect that Steve has read The Stranger and The Plague. But The Misunderstanding is a play, so I'm thinking that he might not have read the play. It is the perfect play to read around Halloween. It is creepy and I highly, highly recommend it. If you like darker books around Christmas time, this might be the perfect season for you to read The Misunderstanding. Okay, another one by a very famous author, Saracine by Balzac. Uh, Balzac, of course, it's <laughs> Balzac, everyone knows Balzac. Uh, but but Saracine is a novella that he wrote and it's a story that it deals with gender and um, gender nonconformity, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's very interesting. Um, now this is a story that was written in the 19th century, so perhaps it's missing some of the nuances um, that we would expect in a book written in 2019 about gender uh, and gender nonconformity. But I thought it was a really interesting story nonetheless, and I'm thinking that Steve has not read that. So that's that with the French works. Um, now we're going to move to um, English language works that were originally written in English. Uh, Children of a Lesser God by Mark Medoff. This is a play and it's a play about a hearing teacher in a school for the deaf and it deals with deaf culture, it deals with the relationship, the interaction between uh, hearing people and deaf people. I would love to see it performed. 
Uh, but I never have problems with just reading a play, so Children of a Lesser God. Sacred Violence by Jill Claster. Uh, Jill Claster is Professor Emerita of New York University. Sacred Violence is the best book I have read on the Crusades. It covers the five Crusades plus uh, all of the um, religious uh, massacres that occurred that are in Europe that are often referred to as Crusades but aren't actually about the Holy Land. So for example, the Albigensian Crusade is included in this work, but at the very end. And I think that this is the best book that I have read on the Crusades. To be fair, I haven't read many books and Sacred Violence is... It's written by Jill Claster at the end of her career, which is why I think that Steve could reasonably be expected to have encountered this book. But also, it is at the research library and less likely to be found at a public library, so that's why I included it on the list. And that's it! So, Steve, let me know which books you've read. Um, hopefully there is at least one book on this list that you haven't read. Uh, but for all the rest of you, these are books I would recommend and I think are really interesting to uh, read. They cover a wide range of topics in a wide range of genres, so let me know if you've read any of these books. I would be really interested um, because if you've read it, Steve has probably read it too. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye now.